Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Order Terra Firmacraft. So the goal for the day is to process all the cobble we got from the quarry, basically turning it all into ingots in the end. But I'm gonna take a couple of the endesite cobble at least, because I wanna use those for building blocks. Also, I wanna take maybe some of the firelight. Yeah, probably also a good idea to at least have a chest of that somewhere. Could also be a nice building block just to change it up. It really doesn't take too much to yeah, process the cobble into metal. So all we gotta do is uh, throw it in front of a fan that has flowing water or a water source in front. Okay, I think it takes a bit longer uh, to convert the cobble into the ores than it takes to convert the wooden ash into charcoal. I'm gonna throw it at the edge of the block here. Because the fan is really slow, it takes a while to get blown over. Oh, some landed there, I can pick it up later, but yeah, hopefully this works. There's a lot of part to this right now. It's actually hard to see what's going on. It's maybe a better angle. Not really. You can just... Ah, there, there we go. Okay. Just converted and was picked up by the funnel immediately after. Okay, there we go. Got hematite, copper and gold. So what do you actually get from this? Uh, we can just take a look at the GAEI. Um, so per yeah, NSI cobble in this case, we have an 8% chance to get a small native copper, that's 10 millibuckets of copper. If you use yeah, the, the ore doubling, it's of course a little bit more. So I already did the math earlier. Um, out of a thousand cobble, we should get around 16 ingots of copper. Or 8 ingots of gold and 8 ingots of iron. It's actually really, really good. So I'm really curious. We got, I think, like six, 700 copper ingots uh, from mining the vein of the quarry. What will we get in comparison by converting all of the cobble? So I think I'm just going to do it uh, with this setup here. It's not really convenient because well, there's also the fire fan. can easily get damaged. Yeah, that's quite scary, actually. Um, in the long run, or maybe we should do it immediately. I actually wanted to have a washing set up here. So we need some uh, running water. I also tried it with the crate mod pipes. But if you actually disconnect those, you don't get a flowing water at the other end. I um, can quickly show it. We're breaking this here. Oh, I need to pick this up. Yeah, there's only particles coming out. So it seems like we would need an aqueduct uh, to get the flowing water again. Okay, so I finished the building, it ends here now, and we got flowing water already, directly on top of a fan actually. So I wanna use a different approach, instead of just slowly blowing stuff to the side, I wanna blow the stuff up so it hovers in mid-air. I think if you set the yeah, fan to something like 128 RPM, this should work nicely. It might be quite visually appealing, so there's gonna be a glass front then in the end, in front, and the items would then hover in mid-air, and get converted. Uh, they would yeah, hover in mid-air in front of one of those funnels, a brass funnel, that we set up a filter with. Um, so just gonna accept basically those little, what are they called? Small native gold pebbles and so on. So those that we get from washing the cobble. And then gonna have a second set of chests here above that will then accept those. Okay, so here below those chests we just got shoots. And then they're running across the belt and I dropped here. Just need to find the correct speed for the fan, I would imagine. And I already looked it up in the JEI if there are any other things we wanna wash with the fan. It's mostly actually just making uh, dough out of flour. So instead of using the crafting table with a bucket and flour, you can just throw the stuff in there if you wanna bulk bre bake bread, for example, in case you got a lot of milk and wanna make a lot of those sweet rolls. And always eating those now, they're really convenient. Uh, but also the eight last ones, and I don't really get to milk the cows. Should also set something automatically. Okay, so I'm gonna continue here. Hopefully this will all work out. So this would be the shape of it. Now the real struggle begins, getting those belts to move somehow. I'm pretty sure I gotta break some walls, so maybe actually use this unused space here on the side to run something up there. By the way, also a nice tip. Those aqueducts work like stairs, so they don't prevent chests from being opened. You can place them nicely above and have a nice divider. I think the cleanest and easiest to get access to the belts might just be to move the back wall like five blocks further out. This might even be neat, so we could have a first floor entry or exit at this side. I like it. 
Well, technically, you could also move all of this stuff three blocks further to the back and have the wall right here. Okay, let's tear everything down. I have it all in place now. Let's see if this works. Okay, let's just throw some andesite cobble in there. Okay, it's hovering there. Is this the right height, though? No, it's not getting blown high enough. I'm wondering if actually this aqueduct might be in the way. Because it limits like the, the airflow. Maybe move it one block further back. Let's see if that actually changes anything. Now it blows all the way up here. Okay, let's see if this works. So maybe it's actually too high. Okay, let's get some andesite cobble again. Highlight. Gotta set up the filter for Phylite as well, I think it got something different from the NS side from the Phylite. Oh, I definitely need the glass wall here in front as well. Go. Oh no, it's way too high now. Maybe having a block just one further up does the trick. Okay, let's see. Let's get some NS side cobble again. Dump it in there. And now this is looking really good. It's directly in front of the funnel. Okay. I don't see any particles though, does it? Yeah, that's convert. <laughs> and it's getting picked up. Oh, okay, perfect. But that's actually really neat. Okay, let's do this. One chest. Another. There's technically actually no limit how much I can dump in front of the fan. Because all of the stacks are affected. in there. I <laughs> don't think even need four input chests. Still got a ton of gravel in there. Notice they can definitely run it through the crushing wheels. Let's see how we're doing here. There's a ton of stuff already. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Maybe I should slow down a little bit. Can this funnel even keep up? Um, I'm just gonna run around real quick. Is there anything visible from on top? Yeah, should. <laughs> There's actually also a reason why I'm using the more expensive brass belt funnels. I tried it with the normal ones at first. They weren't able to reliably pick up all the items, so some have actually just skipped. Now everything goes into the first chest, and then the second one, once this one is full. What is it? Clicked something, that's why. Uh, <laughs> silly. Oh, they actually converted everything. Okay, so we can basically can keep up. Goes really quick. Awesome. No, but what is this stuff? Oh, that's from the uh, the other type of cobble. I need to set up the filter for this. So that's the rest here that's getting converted. And let's check the chests. Oh my god. <laughs> this is actually a lot again. I mean, those are the, the small pebbles. They don't give you nearly as much as the, the rich iron ore or copper ore. But you can maybe crush it all and see what we got. Yeah, Just crushing some gravel right now. Just need to wait for this to be processed and we put it all in there. I'm actually going to keep a stack of the malachite here because that can be turned into... Malachite powder with the good old quern. So if you use the crushing wheels or the millstone, of course it turns into crushed copper. But if the quern, we can get malachite powder, which is basically green dye. And I think I can only get it from cactus, but I haven't come across a desert yet. Is that actually a, another recipe that would work? Large fern. Not sure if I've seen that stuff. So cactus for sure. I think this is actually just a vanilla large fern. This is not the terra firma craft large fern, yeah. Don't think we will ever find that. Ah, okay. There's also the barrel cactus and the reindeer lichen. Oh, I'm not sure if I actually brought some of that stuff home. Actually, I have 19 in my chest here, so there is a use for it. I wonder if you could actually automate this with the deployer somehow. Just need to really aim at the, the hand crank there.
I'm almost starving, so time to make some food again. I ate all the sweet rolls, so completely out of that, and I didn't milk the cows often enough, so it wouldn't be totally worth it to make new ones. So I'm gonna switch to the good old sandwiches again, harvested a couple of the soybeans and potatoes. So let's make some bread real quick, so we can flour first, and then use the new setup to turn this into... Oh, it doesn't even give you... Oh, it doesn't even give you 100%. I think if the millstone it does... Well, let's actually <laughs> try this again. I mean, it makes sense to get a penalty for using a crushing wheel for something like that. So I'm just gonna use seven, get stack again. So, yeah, still a point having the millstone. There, get 100%. Okay, then let's use the new setup. I definitely have to break some walls there because the filter is not set up yet, but let's see how long this actually takes. It's gonna take forever, then I guess, guess I'm just gonna craft it. Nope, there it is. Okay, this is pretty decent. Now let's set up the filter. I haven't really found a nice way to actually just take the filter. So if I use the wrench, I'm gonna mine the whole funnel. If I do something like right click or shift right click, it doesn't take it. But it does work if it's just replacing it with like a knife real quick. Take the filter, set it up. And confirm. Then swap back again. So I wonder what's gonna happen if we actually have more items to filter than we can put in there. If there's an option for that. Do we need a second funnel or something like that? Hopefully we don't run into this issue very soon. Okay, there's the dough. Let's make sandwiches. Mm, I just see it. A second fan with some fire in front would actually be nice for that. We're definitely gonna set it up in one of the upcoming episodes, but for now I'm just gonna use the grill. I mean, that's already an upgrade compared to at first, if we had to put in one single piece of dough at a time. <laughs> it's actually already so much better. Yummy! A real classic rye bread sandwich with cheese, potato and soybean. Now that I actually know how the system works, looks like we actually have way too much grain and dairy in there. But unfortunately, yeah, I can only put in three different ingredients. There's not much room actually to improvise. We could maybe go a little bit lower with the vegetables and put some meat on there. So it's easier to actually max our protein. I think if I just eat the sandwich here, then I don't even max our protein. It needs to be 1.0 or higher. Okay, maybe we can actually change it up a little bit the next time. And maybe instead of having, yeah, the soybeans, some proper meat, but uh, then we might not get to 1.0 with the vegetables. I'll try around a little bit. Next, I'm gonna work on a bit of a passion project. I've shown this before. So if you wanna make some leather, first you gotta soak it in lime water, which I'm doing right now. Then you gotta take the soaked hide out, put it on a log, and then use your knife and scrape the leather. We have to click it in 16 different pixels. Then you can yeah, soak it in water again, and then as a last step, soak it in tannin. I was wondering back then if you could actually automate the scraping yeah, with the knife, the deployer. We tried this out and you could only scrape a single pixel of the ladder because the deployer was always aiming at the right spot. So I kind of gave up on that, but I've been thinking uh, the other day, what if we actually have the deployer rotate around on a mechanical bearing? So like here we got a windmill bearing. I could imagine if the deployer would be a little bit of an angle that if he aims down could maybe hit that ladder in a different spot and another pixel could get scraped. So if you could maybe make some sort of a setup where we have a deployer hitting all six different pixels, this step could actually be automated. Um, right now, ladder making can't be fully automated, so we can put items in a barrel automatically. We can use a deployer that has a hand crank yeah, in his fist to uh, seal barrels automatically. Then yeah, we can pump in liquids and so on. Right now, the only two steps that might not be able to be automated are yeah, using the deployer to scrape it and actually the, the whole act of putting the height on the lock. For some reason, the deployer also doesn't want to do that. But maybe if we can actually get it to work with the knife to scrape it automatically. But this is something uh, that would be quite tricky to do testing in survival. So if shit gets real tough, then I'm definitely gonna head to creative mode. So what I also often do in my vanilla series, 
case stuff gets really hard to test, then really no point struggling in survival. Let's quickly go in creative. So to quickly show the problem again, so if I have a hide and the deploy of a knife, always the same pixel will be scraped. Okay, now I actually want to test this by having a couple of those deployers with knives in their hand, rotating around, and yeah, see if maybe different pixels can be scraped. There we go. So we have to just add some glue here. And then a creative motor here at the bottom. Okay, now we can spin this. I guess we can also increase the speed real quick. Let's go for 256. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like different pixels are getting hit and some that are actually closer. Like almost half of it is scraped already, so, so it should definitely be feasible that every single pixel can be hit if you have just do it at the right spot. Ah, oh, that's gonna be quite tricky though. Let's try this next. So we had the best results with the most pixels that got scraped with the deployer that was closest to the, the bearing, but not all of them actually got hit. So I was thinking if you maybe have like four of the yeah, deployers on different sides and all rotate them, Maybe all of the pixels get hit. Okay, so let's try it out. I'm gonna set the speed to 56 and turn this on. Oh, it's like everything is glued now to a single one. Might not have set this up correctly. Let me try again. Might be best to just use super glue instead of the vertical chassis. Let's try that. Yeah, now they're all independently spinning. But if you look at the height, yeah, not all of the pixels are getting scraped. There's two missing here, one there, so like five in total. If you maybe play around a little bit with the speed, that changes stuff. Let's try a couple speeds. I can actually also fine tune it. Get any more results? Hmm, not quite. We run it really slow. Oh, it's gonna be so tricky to do this. <laughs> Maybe more deployers can actually help. It's still super glued. Let's try that. Let's run it quicker. Yeah! Now there's only two pixels missing. Got those spinning here right on top. Ooh, getting there. Maybe just adding more deployers like this will do the trick. Hope we don't have any issues stopping this at the right time. Just see if it works. Okay, we got a new height. Oh. That does look promising. Is it only a single pixel now? Oh my god. Yeah, as I suspected, stopping this actually the wrong moment causes the blocks to plop because they occupy the same space. We could probably get around this by just um, powering it for a certain amount of time. So it would always do a full rotation. So a certain amount of ticks this gets timed and always do this, does a 360. Um, yeah, otherwise it always stops at the nearest, uh, closest 90 degree angle as far as I know. It's actually a way to set this up. Always place when stopped. Only place near initial angle. That might be an idea. Only place when anchor destroyed. That actually reminds me we had this issue with the rope pulley and the mining system. Always place when stopped was I think selected. Then we had the issue that uh, some obsidian formed on top. What if we actually had set this to? <laughs> only place near initial angle or starting position. I think this would actually have solved our issues with the, the quarry getting stuck. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try it next time. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll try it on with a bit here. Okay, that's interesting. But it still doesn't hit that final pixel. So I guess starting it from different positions doesn't really help. Ah, too bad. I don't know what I just did, but the uh, height got fully scraped. 
Was actually playing around with the speed again? Or is it just the starting position? Now it works somehow. Oh, but this would be hard to recreate. Or was it a speed that I played around with? Maybe it actually changed like the starting position or something like that. Oh my god, this would be hard to recreate. There's one pixel missing again. I think it's the same one. Oh man. Doesn't do it. Maybe one more thing to try if we actually glue this together differently. Because it's definitely not symmetrical. As far as I can tell. So instead of having a 3x3 three three here. Let's have it glued here. Let's see. Let's run it fast again. I don't think the speed helps too much. <gasps> it did it! Oh my god! Okay, that looked promising. Let's try another one. Yeah, I did it again! It is definitely highly directional. Um. Yeah, that's something nice. We definitely know this from Vanilla. Check it out, guys. I can actually fully remove one side. And it's still getting scraped. <laughs> oh, we're getting there. I also feel like the one here in the middle spinning is kind of unnecessary. Uh, let's just place a, any block, really, there again. Now we could also actually test if all of those are required. So we just take this one out. Let's see. Yes, it does work. Okay, let's see how few we can use. Looks like the answer is seven. So I removed each one of those and ran it without. And yeah, it works with those seven. But I feel like it's actually slightly slower to get that last pixel compared to having all nine of them. Um, let's maybe compare this real quick. Knives. Felt like it's faster. It's actually not that last pixel just takes here. Okay, then let's go for seven. Also, does the starting position really matter? Um, that would be interesting to see. If this setup definitely works, let's try again. No, stop it randomly like this. And spin it. Now it just doesn't do it, so it does matter. Okay, then we're just gonna go for this approach that I suggested earlier. To power this for a certain amount of time, so it does a full rotation. Check it out, they even got their own redstone components in create mode. I wouldn't be a big fan of this in vanilla, but here I'm definitely gonna use it. It's so much more convenient than like a comparator pulse extender. You can actually just scroll here how much you wanna extend it. Uh, if you go to something like uh, more than, I think 20 ticks, so more than a second, goes up in one second steps and you can even go to minutes 30 minutes is the max okay but i needed like two seconds and eight ticks so 2.4 seconds and now it's perfectly spinning to the starting position again okay um let's try it out the height is this enough it was this one pixel it took a little bit longer Yeah, okay, let's maybe go for three seconds. Just gotta find perfect timing again for the full rotation. Definitely not the case. Okay, it requires a bit of testing. Looks like three seconds and 16 ticks on the pulse extenders is the answer. Let's try it again. And there, <laughs> just in time. Also, by the way, it doesn't matter if you have a large height, medium or small height, you always need to hit uh, 16 pixels. Also works with the small one. Also, a side note, it actually takes off durability every time you try to scrape it. So even the failed scrape attempts at the same pixel would take off durability of the knives. So roughly 100 durability is used when doing this with this setup compared to 16 that do it manually. But I think it's just 
more convenient in the end, I just press a button or I place my height and then it scrapes it for me. I mean, this is <laughs> such a fun contraption here. It's actually awesome. <laughs> Wait, what? Did not work? Oh, the, those guys didn't have knives. Yeah. <laughs> so here would be the compacted version now that I actually want to use. Might not be the best setup, maybe in a different rotation, you, you only need six knives or whatever, and, or I don't need to do it as long, but uh, I'm just happy I got it to work, to be honest. I'm not gonna try the, the perfect solution for this problem. This is already pretty decent now. Okay, I also changed the timings. This, uh, yeah, pulse extender is a two, and we got 18 there, and we're using a button now. There we go. Perfectly scraped, and then I can pick it up. Okay, um, unfortunately, as I yeah, told you guys, you can't use the deployer to actually automatically place the soak tight. It doesn't work. So the way I understand it, the lock would need to be two blocks lower, because if you place the height, it's basically its own block. So it needs to be placed against the other one. Yeah, basically two blocks below the deployer. So if I place the lock up here, which you might think might do it, no, just doesn't work. I also tried it from the side and all angles even gave those guys here heights and spun it. Doesn't work. <laughs> so if this machine were basically in a position that we can make fully automatic ladder, except this one step of actually placing the height on the lock. So we could technically in Terra Firmacraft also make a passive mob farm like in vanilla. Passive mobs spawn every 400 ticks in case the mob cap is filled up. So in case we would you know, completely remove all animals from spawn chunks and the area of our passive mob farm, we could get animals depending on the biome to spawn and we could automatically kill them without lifting a finger or doing any breeding or hunting. So this is possible, we can get hide automatically. Then, um, yeah, we can also, for example, fill barrels, um, pipes from on top. Placement is just it's stupid. For some reason you can't place on top, even if you shift click. Uh, so yeah, just a uh, pump here. You can fill it with water and make lime water, for example. You can also move the barrel to the side with the mechanical piston, for example. And then you also can put in items from on top of a chute. Only from on top, not from the side. So we, we can throw in our... Yeah. Uh, what do we need? Flux? To make lime water? <laughs> Great aim. Flux. Make lime water. Of course you would use the correct amount. Oh, not gluing it. Back 20 for a full barrel. Then we can throw in the raw height. If we have any. Yeah. And then we can use a deployer, a hand crank. Oh, it placed it. Let's be one block further. There. Is the hand crank. There it is. The hand crank to actually seal the barrel as well. I think it did it. Yeah, it's sealed now. Then we can use a chute again from below to take it out. Okay, so everything can be automated except placing it on the lock. Oh, by the way, knife making can technically also be automated. Not the high-end blue steel or red steel knives, but the black bronze knife, for example. So yeah, blue steel and so on. You have to yeah, make on the anvil. But for example, a black bronze knife, you can still use the molds, which we can also make automatically. So we can also produce clay automatically. Yeah, so fully automatic ladder, almost possible in order to refer craft. If it wouldn't be yeah, for the placing. Uh, quite a shame. That would definitely be a nice end goal project. You might also be wondering what would we even want with all that ladder? And the answer might be actually toolboxes. Because you can also use hoppers to fill them automatically and so on. And we can't get any shiker boxes in order to refer craft because there's no end dimension and no magic shikers and so on. Realism is the focus. So we could use actually the toolboxes as a shiker box replacement. Of course, we can also use the minecarts to store a huge amount um, just by yeah, having chests attached to a minecart. 
but it would be a bit more inconvenient. Um, I think the toolbox, in case you have like a double chest real quick, and there's a couple, I don't know, <laughs> toolboxes filled with stuff if you want, <laughs> whatever it is, it would be easier to grab than a minecart that you have to place first and so on. So, I don't know, might be an idea of an yeah, end game project. But now let's actually go back to survival and build up this little contraption here. I think it's just super cool to have it. The setup is a little bit bulky and it was kind of hard to find a yeah, nice location for the setup. But I think this is still okay. I moved some of the barrels around and you know we can just press the button. And it would spin. And stops in the right location again. Okay, if you look at the top, pokes out a couple blocks, it's not too bad. You can also, if you want, always cover the rotating shafts with some casings, so it looks a bit better. So I guess it's okay. Alright, then let's try it out. I think I still need to glue it. Or was it already correctly? I actually built this in the wrong direction earlier. No, it's it's correct now. Okay, so I goofed it up. So if you, if you look at the indicator on the map, if you're facing north, then this has to be... Uh, towards the south. So the, the bearing is one blocks further to the south and then surrounded by the deployers like this. Okay, let's give them knives. I made eight iron knives. Okay, still got two more. And I got one soaked hide. So this is our only try. If something goes wrong, I guess we have to go hunting again. Let's see. Let's just scrape it. No, not at all. What am I doing wrong? Looks like the employer setup was just incorrect. I think we need one here. And that should do it. Actually good, we can always try again. Uh, if you just take it off before it's completely scraped. Then we'll unscrape it. What was it actually? Those two they were missing. Um, one more try, real quick. Otherwise I have to go back to the creative world. Let's unscrape it somehow. Place it again. That was it! Okay. So those two are missing. Awesome. <laughs> now we got the height scraper. Um, obviously all the time we spend on this could have scraped hundreds of heights manually, but I think it's just super cool. Alright guys, so that's all for today. So we processed all of the cobble and we got a setup in case we bring over more. And of course we got the very important leather scraping setup. Might be handy at some point. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this episode. See you guys next time. Bye bye.